In this tutorial, we'll be defining aperture, ISO and shutter speed, which are the backbone of any photographer's knowledge. From here, you'll be able to switch out of full auto mode and discover some of the more advanced settings on your EOS DSLR camera. A good way to think of this is about comparing them to the way your eye works. With that in mind, let's first define aperture. This is a measurement of how wide the hole in the back of the lens opens to allow light in. You can think of it as the iris in your eye. Aperture values are expressed in numbers called f-stops. A smaller f-stop number means more light is coming into the camera. For example, f1.4 lets in a lot more light, whereas f22 is like a pinhole. Aside from controlling the amount of light into the exposure, aperture is also adjusted to change the depth of field, but we'll talk more about that in the next tutorial. So now, ISO. ISO is a measure of how light sensitive the camera is. With digital cameras, you can change the sensitivity of the sensor by simply changing the ISO. Using our eye analogy again, you can think of it as the retina at the back of your eye, which is the part that actually captures the image. So the higher the number, the more light sensitive the sensor in the camera is. So with each increase of ISO value, you'll notice that they double. So they count 100, 200, 4, 8, 1600, and so on, each becoming more and more light sensitive. As a general rule, in a darker room, use a higher ISO value, like 800. And when you're outside on a bright, sunny day, use 100 or maybe 200. So the lower your ISO value, the more detail you'll get in your photograph. EOS cameras have a large range of ISO, and most models allow you to shoot anything between 100 and 1600, and some go well outside this range. Now onto shutter speed. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second, and it's the amount of time that the shutter is open for for each time you take a photograph. The larger the number, the faster the shutter speed. So if we relate this back to our eye, it's similar to the eyelid. Of course, our eyes are seeing sort of constant motion, uh, so they're always open rather than opening and closing as it does in a, in a still camera. Fast shutter speeds are like maybe two thousandth of a second are used to generally freeze really fast motion. And slow shutter speeds like thirtieth of a second, they're generally used in really low light situations. The lower the shutter speed, the richer the colours and the more detail you'll have in the image. Each interval doubles the time the shutter speed is open for. So again, you sort of go from 1,000th of a second, then becomes 500th of a second, which then becomes 250th of a second, and so on. In daylight, most of your shots will be around 1 25th of a second. Anything slower than, say, 60th of a second, and you might want to start thinking about using a tripod or just resting the camera on some stable surface just to avoid that camera shake. It's a good idea to remember the photographer's secret. Don't shoot on a shutter speed that is anything less than one on the focal length of the lens. Now, for example, if you're using a 250mm lens, you should only use a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second or faster, unless you have a tripod. Now, I know these definitions can sometimes be a bit of a mouthful, but in the next tutorial, we'll explain how they all work together. So if you watch it, it should help answer any questions that you have.